Hello, I'm George, and welcome to IELTS 100. In this lesson on the writing of IELTS, I'm going to teach you how to make complex sentences correctly in order to help you meet and hopefully exceed the first descriptor under grammatical range and accuracy for the band of score of 7 for both task 1 and task 2. To achieve the Banda score of 7, candidates need to use a variety of complex structures. Please note, if you're not using complex sentences correctly and sufficiently, you may not meet this descriptor for a Banda score of 7 in the area of grammatical range and accuracy. So, without further ado, let's get us started. What is a complex sentence? A complex sentence consists of one independent clause and one or more dependent clauses. Before I go any further, let me remind you what independent and dependent clauses are. A clause is a group of words that has a subject and a verb. So, according to this definition, I left home is a clause. Now. If the clause can stand alone, that is, if you can add a period after the clause and it is still meaningful, the clause can be called an independent clause. So let's add a period after I left home. As you can see, it can stand alone and is meaningful. So I left home is an independent clause and adding a period at the end will turn it into a simple sentence. But when I left home is not an independent clause since it cannot stand alone. Adding a period after when I left home does not create a simple sentence. Rather, it creates a fragment, which is a mistake I discussed in video lesson two. Therefore, when I left home is a dependent clause. So, a dependent clause cannot stand alone and therefore must be added to an independent clause to make sense. So, when you add a dependent clause to an independent clause, you have created a complex sentence. Please note that a complex sentence only has one main idea while a compound sentence, the sentence that I discussed in video lesson 4, has two or more main ideas depending on the number of independent clauses in it. In order to learn how to make complex sentences correctly, you need to learn the three types of dependent clauses, and in this lesson, I will teach you just that. First dependent clause type, adjective clauses. An adjective clause is a clause that follows a noun and provides some information about it. It is also called a relative clause. Here is an example. Universities that offer co-op programs are more popular among university applicants. In this sentence, that offer co-op programs is an adjective clause that provides some information about the universities. In fact, it shows which universities are more popular. Now, look at this example. University of Waterloo, which offers co-op programs, is very popular among university applicants. In this sentence, which offers co-op programs is an adjective clause that provides more information about the University of Waterloo. However, there is a difference between the two adjective clauses. As you can see, the first one is necessary to identify the universities, while the second one is not necessary to identify the University of Waterloo, since the University of Waterloo is identifiable without the adjective clause. 
When an adjective clause is unnecessary to identify the noun that goes before it, it must be surrounded by two commas. Also, you can never use that in unnecessary adjective clauses. However, in necessary adjective clauses, we tend to use that and we can never use two commas around the adjective clause. Here is another example. Earth, which is the third planet from the Sun, is the only planet known to harbor life. In the sentence, the adjective clause is placed between two commas as it is unnecessary to identify Earth. That is, we already know what Earth is without the adjective clause. Now, see this example. The planet that has the highest number of satellites is Saturn. In the sentence, if I were to say the planet is Saturn, you would certainly ask which planet? This shows that the adjective clause is necessary to identify the planet and therefore no commas are used around it. Now that you have learned the difference between necessary and unnecessary adjective clauses, let me introduce the pronouns that are used in adjective clauses. These pronouns, which are also called relative pronouns, are that, who, which, whose, where, when, and why. The punctuation for all of these pronouns is the same as the example that I provided earlier. Look at these two examples. Paris, comma, where the highest number of museums are located, comma, receives millions of international visitors every year. The city where the highest number of museums are located is Paris. In the first example, the adjective clause is not necessary to identify Paris, so the sentence is still meaningful even without the adjective clause. But the second sentence is not quite meaningful without the adjective clause, 